Do you wish there were an easy automated wizard to help set up Teams Rooms and Surface Hub accounts? Well, there is. It's buried in the admin center, but we can find it. So if we go to setup, after we're signed in as a active, uh, an appropriate user with the correct rights in admin center, advanced deployment guides and assistance. We'll click on that. And then, uh, so I already have a filter here, but let's clear that. But let's add the filter back. I want to filter on communication and conferencing. And that brings up a few things. And look at that, Surface Hub and Microsoft Teams Rooms Setup Guide. Let's click on that and it takes us over to a whole new world where it asks us, do we want to set up Surface Hub or Teams Rooms? I'm going to do Teams Rooms. Next. Tells me a bunch of information about uh, you know, the use case of Teams Rooms. I'm cool with that. I want it to be Teams, correct? I'm Exchange Online. I'm Azure Active Directory. My network is not behind a proxy, so I can leave these all as default. Go to Next. Um, okay, it wants me to test the network, which is a good choice. Let's go ahead and do that really quickly. Run the test. Now, uh, this is a basic test. There's an option for an advanced test that I recommend you do. See this download? You would click Open File and run it from there. I happen to know I'm in good shape, but this is a great best practice. Always check the network before installing Teams Rooms. Okay, so I know my network is good. Let's move on. Create and configure my device account. All right, let me add a device account. Do you have an existing device account? No. So the display name is going to be Conference Room 4, alias uh, MTR-TVW-Conference 4. I'm using my naming convention where I have MTR for all Microsoft Teams rooms. TVW is a location, so town view, and then Conference 4. The domain, teamsdevicelab.com, sure, select the location is going to be the United States. An auto response message, say, hey, this meeting room is equipped with Teams rooms. Be sure to make this meeting invite a Teams, teams meeting enabled invite or something along those lines. Uh, process external meeting messages. I'm going to set this to true. I need to process external meeting messages for several reasons, but uh, one of the main use cases is to support WebEx and Zoom meetings. So let's go ahead and set that to true. This is a nice tick box, by the way, because the other ways to do this, the, there's no other way to do this GUI. You have to do it via PowerShell if you're not using this wizard. The capacity of conference room four, we're gonna set that to four people. That's the maximum number of people. And any kind of tool tip, so this is as you hover the mouse over the name inside Outlook, there's a little tool tip so you can say, this room is Teams rooms enabled and we'll get the spelling correct here this room this team's rooms enabled add device account you can't click that because you have to kind of scroll up and hidden up here not completely obvious is licenses we need to assign a license let's hope we have some licenses available um, all my pros are gone so i'll just give it a basic license for now in almost every case, you'll want to use the pro license, but this is a te demo tenant, so I don't have a lot available to me. So now it's going through and creating the device account. Um, notice uh, they call it device accounts in all of the Teams Rooms documentation. It's a resource account. So uh, we probably should reference to the people who wrote this wizard that you're really creating a resource account because you're really in the back end creating a Microsoft Exchange resource account. You're basically creating a calendar. Uh, object for these things. So um, there we go. I think I already clicked that. I think I already did that. So it's a little redundant. So I think uh, I can just close now. And are you sure you want to close? If you select that device, your device will not be added. Everything seems accurate. Well, let's just close and see what happens. Let's see if it's uh, put anything in here next. Multi-factor authentication on. 
exclude your device from multi-factor authentication. We do want that. Um, but I, well, we've detected that you don't have multi-factor authentication enabled. We plan on implementing MFA in the future. Okay, good. So I don't want we don't want multi-factor with this account. Uh, now that you've completed the resources, you can sign into your device with your device account. And finish. Now, let's see if this actually created an account. So let me go to uh, users, active users, and see if I have my conference room four. Conference room four. So there it is. So it's created it. Teams room is basic. Now, the one thing we have not done is set a password. So you can't sign into it. Even though we went through the wizard, the wizard never asked for a password. So let me throw in a password. There's my password I use for my conference rooms. Now we should be good to go. Let's look at some of these settings that it created. Uh, there's our username, uh, alternate email, Teams Rooms accounts. I have a dynamic group that looks for any user account called MTR Dash and adds them to a group. So that's probably how that got added. Uh, doesn't have any devices enrolled, not yet. Licenses is gonna be basic. Teams Rooms basic. So it looks like we've set this all up. Let's go and look at the exchange settings on this guy though. Because again, I said this is an exchange resource account. So let's see if it did any auto answer, um, auto, you know, auto, uh, auto accept um, on the mailbox. So resources, conference room four. Capacity four. Remember, we set the capacity to four. Hide from global address list. Booking. No delegation. The mail tip, which we set. This room is Teams rooms enabled, so we set that. Email address. There's all our email addresses. Cool. Uh, no custom attributes. And booking options, allow repeated meetings, automatically decline meetings outside this limit. So it looks like it's going to automatically accept meetings so long as um, they aren't more than uh, six months in advance or a 24-hour long meeting. You can change this all you want. Um, here's the text we put in at the bottom to when the meeting gets auto-accepted. So it looks like everything worked fine. So there you go. Got a little squirrely with um, it kind of wanting to create the count a couple times. Uh, unnecessarily, but that's how you create a resource account without ever having to use PowerShell.